My name is Matt Carpel, and I'm the owner of Value Auto. I've been officially running the company for probably about five or six years. We started in Owego, New York, and then we started branching off to other areas, and now we're up to 12 locations. We cover New York and Pennsylvania, a lot of upstate New York, and um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. We provide heavy duty towing, light duty towing, road service, heavy duty repair shop, and uh, minor repairs on small vehicles too. We have uh, about 80 trucks and anywhere from a rotator to a light duty wrecker and road service vehicles. On average, we have about 85 to 90 employees. My name is Joe Carpo and I'm with Value uh, Auto in Oweo, New York. I started uh, in 1996 with a used car lot and bought my first tow truck in 2000. And we did a lot of retail repair and it seemed as though every time I turned around I was handing a tow truck guy 50 or 100 bucks. And uh, I decided that as part of what we were doing. I think one of the biggest blessings that they can pass their business down to their children. Uh, so many friends of mine uh, have slaved for 20 or 30 years and they've got no place. They, they end up selling it generally for not very much money or, or anything else. But, um, you know, if, if your kid wants to follow in your footsteps, you know, what, what can be a better thing? I remember growing up in the family business, um, riding in the tow truck all hours of the day and night. Job roles I've had growing up would be like anywhere from answering the phone to working on a truck to driving the truck to doing it all at the same time. That's kind of part of this business. Yeah, it was always my dream to be in the towing business. I didn't think that I would have this many trucks, but I always thought maybe I'd have like 15 or 20, but now we're up to 80, so um, I think we're just gonna keep growing. For a 26 year old kid to just take on 80, 90 employees, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Matt is a very good leader in the fact that he makes other people more driven because of how driven he is. He eats, sleeps, and breathes this industry. He doesn't think of anything else. He doesn't really, I don't think he knows how to do anything else other than just expand and drive and go forward with what he's doing. Matt's a role model to me just in the sheer fact of the same, the same type thing. Just being that driven and that focus makes you want to spend more time being driven and focused because makes you think when you're not doing something productive, he's always doing something productive. A lot of times in other situations or other companies that I've worked at, you realize that like management feels above people and like, oh, I don't need to do that, you do that. It, me, myself, and especially Matt, like we, we literally sweep the floor. If nobody's sweeping the floor. Like there's nothing here we or he ever feels above doing. So it's nice to work alongside of you know the owner and or the management and not ever feel like you're not equivalent. Matt has built me in this industry. Without Matt, and I wouldn't be here. And it was always a dream of mine. He is probably the best boss that I have ever come across in my life. And I've been in many industries and he took the time to take someone that had no experience, just had a little bit of drive behind him. He literally made, like I said, made me to where I am today. I, I, I didn't know a single thing about a tow truck. I could drive bigger trucks. That was that I came from a farm and it, he's just an inspiration to be so young and where he is and where I was at his age is just, it's amazing. It, 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 the job is amazing, this place. Again, I fall back on, you're not just a number here. If you have a problem, you're able to call. It, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They could be having dinner with their wives. They could be in a different state. It doesn't matter. And you call and you have a question, they'll genuinely listen to you and, and they will help you and walk you through it. It doesn't matter what it is, what time of day it is. And, and they care about you as a human being in your personal life. They actually care. We've been a customer of Zips since 2017. The trucks I've built with Zips were light 
anything from a light duty wrecker, a light duty carrier to a heavy wreckers, rotators. The most rewarding thing is buying this truck. It's everything I wanted. With the, with the chassis and the body and the paint and the bumper and the custom signs on the boom, painted the frame red. The recent rotator that they built with us uh, is a 2023 W990 Kenworth uh, 1150 50 ton rotator. It is completely custom with splatter paint inside the boxes, dual revolution LEDs all throughout the truck that change from amber to red, uh, blue M6s all around the truck, $25,000 night scan light tower, $7,000 herd bumper. It's completely custom and uh, definitely a one of a kind. Some of the storage components added to the build on this truck include uh, outrigger pad storage that go under the front uh, tunnel box. You put two uh, four inch pads in each of those uh, boxes. Um, and then some other stuff would be like an American Eagle seven drawer toolbox, front uh, chain compartment storage. It's uh, loaded out uh, as much as we can. I choose to deal with zips because of Eric. I mean, I think me and Eric have a pretty good relationship. I don't think I've ever bought a Jardin and ever had a friendly person on the phone that I've dealt with, so. I would just like to thank uh, Matt and his dad, Joe, for the business over the years since I met Joe back in 2016. Uh, they bought an, uh, a lot of trucks from Zips over the years, and uh, we're very grateful to have them as a, a friend and a customer. There's been a lot of close calls on the side of the road. I mean, I've never been in a truck while it got hit, but I've definitely been extremely frustrated on the side of the road with my legs hanging out underneath the tractor, pulling out a drive shaft and had somebody less than a foot away from my feet or my head or, I've had people hit equipment that I had not even on the road, just next to the road, definitely. I've had a couple close calls. Um, you just take it in stride day by day. Um, not everybody's gonna move over. You just really gotta be able to watch your own back because no one's gonna be there to watch it out. And, like I said, my main goal is just to make it back home at the end of the day to my family, so. We want to keep the operators safe so they can go home to their families. When we got our first traffic commander, we were on scene to an accident and traffic wasn't moving over and we flipped up the signboard and traffic started moving over and the police officer said, wow, I've never seen anything like that. And the one thing I would definitely say about the traffic commander is it seems like a lot of money, but when you take what you would usually spend on a normal light bar off the price of the commander, it's. <laughs> I don't think there's any price on if it actually is safer, but definitely when you think about the fact of what you would spend on a light bar to begin with, I, I think that I would love if we could get them on as many trucks as we could. Some people when they're on the side of the road, it could be a nice egg truck with an amber flashing light or a AAA like doing a roadside. And when you have a sign that flips up like that, I feel like it's more authority like that they feel they really do need to get over. Challenges we've went through, you know, being involved in the company is definitely COVID and the price of everything has probably went up 40% in the last two or three years. So that's definitely a big challenge. And then help obviously is always a challenge. In the future, I mean, I would like to do more work all around everywhere. And maybe eventually in the next couple of years, open some more locations in some other areas and add some more trucks and more equipment. What has allowed us to do what we're doing today is that uh, we just happened to fall into an area where technology got cheap. And uh, if we back up a few uh, couple of years, the um, dash cams and GPS systems and things that we, we uh, pretty much take for granted today were very expensive in those days. And, uh, <clears throat> but now we can look at a screen, we can see you know, where every truck is, how fast they're going, what the odometer reading is on them, the fuel level, just unbelievable. They have a saying, some people work to live and other people live to work. And, uh, <clears throat> I believe that we built what we do because we'd answer the phone nights and weekends. And a lot of people just aren't willing to work that way these days.